But during this whole time, I continued to do fundraising, public speaking, lobbying, anything that I could do to try to make an impact so that everyone who wanted to be free and serve openly could. And so when the Dornas Mattel bill was passed by the Senate, I was so excited and I got a phone call from service members of the Legal Defense Network and they said, you know, we need your full name, your social security number, and your date of birth. And I was like, I don't think that ever call. <laughs> They said, just trust us, and I was like, oh, okay. So I gave the information, and sure enough, that night I got an invitation to come to Washington, D.C. for the bill signing ceremony. Wow. And I was just like so excited, so the first thing I did is called my hairstylist. Yeah. <laughs> and Eric hooked me up, and I was like, Eric, I don't know anything about makeup, and he sent me to Barbies, and I, <laughs> I got the makeup, and I got the hair, and jumped out of the red eye. And I flew to Washington, D.C., and when I arrived there, I saw a number of other colleagues who had also been working on the appeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And I said, isn't that odd that they called and asked for your name, social security number, and date of birth? And they were like, no, no one asked me for that. And I was like, shoot, you know, so I called the guy who had asked me, and I was like, what's that all about? You know, you didn't ask anyone else. And they said, well, I wanted to wait until you got here to surprise you. The president wants two veterans up on stage with him when he signs the bill. And we had to do a security background check on you to make sure you weren't going to do anything bad. <laughs> so I was flabbergasted and so glad I saw my hairstylist. <laughs> um, it was an ethereal moment. Like I can't even describe to you what it was like to stand next to the President of the United States. And if you Google it and look online, you'll see the pictures, you'll see the videotapes. And he's literally like this close to me. And, you know, he walks past and he sits down, and I've been working on this for, at that point, 18 years. 18 years of fits and starts and lobbying under administrations, you know, we're going to change it. And I was like, what could go wrong now? <laughs> and they use 18 pens to sign the name once, because they scan them out as souvenirs afterward. So he would do the, the back of the B, and he'd put the pen down, and take the second pen, and he'd finish the B, and he'd put the pen down, and he'd get another pen. And he would do the A, and so it takes a really long time to sign the rock bottom. And he gets about halfway through it, and I, I don't know, I'm just like paranoid. I just like, make sure you spell it right. <laughs> In my outside voice. <laughs> to the President of the United States. <laughs> Seemed a little disrespectful. <laughs> But I was retired at that point. <laughs> so I, um, he did sign it right, and um, it became, you know, well, it didn't become law immediately. It was, the bill was signed, but then, as you all know, we've lived through it. It took a nine month period of training and acclimation and everything else that they needed to do to dot their I's and cross their T's. And then, it, it, and the other benefit of being up there on stage with the president, I was just mentioning this to someone is while people in the audience could see what was going up on stage, I had the benefit and the privilege of being able to look out, just as I'm looking out at you, at all of the faces in the audience. And I mean, I, I, I tear up whenever I think about it, because there were like 300, 400 people there that were, you know, con congressional staffers that had been working on it, veterans that had been working on it, people I know that had been kicked out, people I know who had lost friends to suicide uh, based on the policy. And it was just, people had tears of joy and tears of relief and tears of uh, just, you know, sort of, healing that was going on in that audience. And to have the benefit and the privilege of seeing that was unbelievable. Um, so when you go fast forward to September 20th, 2011, the date that Don't Ask, Don't Tell officially was no longer um, in the books, the next day, or midnight that night, at, at the end of the day, OutServe, have you guys heard of the organization Woo! OutServe? Oh, yeah. OutServe had a magazine and they published I think it was like 100, 101 faces or 100 faces of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And I still tear up thinking about it. Because most of us who worked on this, this is exactly what we worked for. It's like days like today, it's like days like that, you're able to see people be able to come forward into the light, share their story, you had every color under the sun, every service. They were all over the globe, these photographs. They just had their name, their specialty, and where they were stationed. And it was just amazing. And I felt, Party. Um, <laughs> it's a scary to stop crying. Um, I felt it like that moment. I started breaking. I find, it finally became real to me, and I finally broke down and cried because I feel like I could pass the torch. Like all these years, being a spokesperson, being a voice, advocating, 
Now people can speak for themselves, and that is exactly what we fought for, and exactly why we went forward with this. And I'm so excited that it's taken hold so quickly and easily, and all the people have embraced it and are stepping forward and being visible and being leaders because I came out because of the leadership training I got in the military. And I think all the people who organized this did such an amazing job because of their leadership training from the military. So we need to harness that energy for the military, for the LGBT community, um, just for democracy. So um, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for participating, and I look forward to seeing you guys next year. Woo! <laughs>